What's going on, y'all? Welcome to another edition of Gen Sports Corner back at you for February 15th, 2023. Back at you. You know what time it is. Recap of the Super Bowl. Crazy game. Even crazier ending. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, what happened. But before you uh, I get into it, uh, we're going to be on YouTube. So like, subscribe, share with everybody you know. We're going to keep the movement going. You know what I mean? But let's get into this game. Chiefs Eagles, one of the is the third watch Super Bowl in on uh that was that's been televised. It was highly anticipated and it didn't disappoint in many ways. But you know, everybody was critical on some of the calls, especially the last one near the end of the game. But if you look at this game, first half, Eagles went up twenty four to fourteen. Really had a lot of good things going. And then in the second half, the Chiefs were able to put up 24 points. They outscored us 24-11 in that second half, including the 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 final uh, play on that drive before the field goal with the holding. You know, Pat Mahomes 21 for 27, buck 82, three TDs, three of them things, including the first one, which was on a uh, blown assignment with Marcus Epps, who completely lost Kelsey, and it was schemed up very well. Um, Mahomes had 131.8 passer rating. He was on fire. Didn't get sacked. Got pressured here and there, but they really didn't get to him all game. Conversely, Jalen Hurts also had a very, very good game. He's one of, he might be the only quarterback who's had 350 yards total from scrimmage and Three plus touchdowns, I believe, that lost the Super Bowl. Steve Young was one person that's done it, and it might be Peyton Manning as the other person who's done it. Uh, Jalen Hurts had 304 passing yards, uh, one through the air, 103.4 passer rating, and then on the ground he had 15 carries for 70 yards, four 4.7 yards a clip. He was the run game and three touchdowns. Man, I mean, he put the team on his back. You can't say anything bad about Jalen Hurts. Um, however, the running game was not as good as we needed it to be. And they actually had more rushing yards than we did. So that tells you a lot about how they were able to do some good things on defense and slowing down that run game. I mean, obviously, Jalen Hurts still put up three touchdowns. However, <laughs> it's so funny how you can put up 35 points and say we did enough to win. Okay, They did enough to keep themselves in the game, and they ran the ball well. Isaiah Pacheco... Uh, 76 yards on the ground, five yards of carry, one touchdown. They were doing a lot of things with pre-snap motion, really getting the defense out of sorts, and that was that allowed them to be able to pick up uh, huge chunks of yards on the ground. They ran for buck 58 on the ground, 6.1 yards a clip, one touchdown on 26 carries. They they really ran the ball well. They really did. All right, and then through the air, Travis Kelsey, again, doing his thing. Six catches, 81 yards, one touchdown, the first one. Um, through the air, I mean, look at the Eagles. A.J. Brown had that big catch, the 45-yarder, took it to the house. Not Six catches, 96 yards, a touchdown. Devonta Smith, seven catches, 100 yards. Both offenses did what they were supposed to do. I, I don't really want to take anything away from the offenses. The defenses left something to be desired. Defensively, this is what I expected out of the Chiefs. They gave up 35 points. They did not play great. They slowed down some things, but just still gave up 35 points, right? <laughs> However, the Eagles' defense gave up 38 points. Regardless of the holding penalty against James Bradbury at the end of the game, they were going to give up a field goal. The only thing... Uh, that change was that they were able to run time off the clock. And I'm looking at the comments here, Darnell. I appreciate that, man. Both guys, they, they did ball out, man. They did what they were supposed to do. And whoever would have lost the game, it wouldn't have been because of Mahomes or Jalen Hurts. <laughs> it would have fallen on the defenses between Steve Spagnolo, Spagnolo and uh, Jonathan Gannon. All right, we're going to get to Jonathan Gannon. You know, there's big news on the front. Uh, for the coaching search for Gannon and Shane Steichen. Oh, what's going on, Black Corleone? Uh, appreciate you being here. Man, we talking Eagles. You know what time it is, man. We're talking about the the Super Bowl, the good, the bad, the ugly, so on and so forth. And we just mentioned how it was on the defenses. And I put up a video on Saturday morning giving my breakdown and prediction for the Super Bowl. 
And one thing that I pointed out, and I have a shorts clip up on YouTube, I pointed out that where the Chiefs are weak is that they give up a lot of points in the red zone and they give up a lot of passing touchdowns, all right? And they did, okay? They gave up a lot of points in the red zone and how they gave up one long one to A.J. Brown. We saw them get torched the week two weeks before by the Bengals, right? So that was to be expected. However, another thing I pointed out in another shorts clip was the Eagles' propensity to, one, blow coverages at points, but two, be weak over the middle of the field when they're playing these quarters and cover three coverages. All right, when you're playing quarters, you have two safeties playing deep down the middle of the field, and you have the two cornerbacks playing deep on their quarter of the field. However, in the middle, you have the linebacker playing a hook zone in the middle, and if you have these crossing routes coming over the middle, guess what's going to be open in the intermediate section? All this green grass here. All right, and we saw with the Giants, um, they ran it on that play, I think, to Kadarius Toney, the one that um, he missed a touchdown. He dropped the ball. Um, there was another play in that game where they ran a, a deep crossing route, intermediate crossing route over the middle, were able to pick up some big chunk yards. And I said, if they don't address that, Kelsey's going to do some things, all right? They had one or two plays where they got chunk yards over the middle. Um, you, you, you clear especially on the flood concept, right? You, you you clear out the cornerback, which would be Slay, right? You clear him out with a deep route, maybe a post, maybe a go route, doesn't matter. And then you have a slot receiver taking the safety deep. And then guess what? You have Kelsey come across the middle. I, I'll start from this way. Kelsey come across the middle. Boom. And there's going to be nobody in this part here because guess what? Slay and I guess Marcus Epps, it would be, have vacated the zones. And they got hit with that on a couple of plays, right? Yeah, you know, shout out to you, Darnell. Um, that's where he thrived. The first touchdown, he, the touchdown that he got, um, and they did this all game, pre-snap motion. Bring in a tight end or wide receiver in the motion to see if they're getting man coverage or if they're getting zone coverage. You're trying to see what the coverage is pre-snap. And what they did that was brilliant on that touchdown play was they brought Kelsey into motion and then stopped him, brought him back. And now Marcus Epps was confused about the assignment, okay? Initially, you have Slay or whoever the corners on that side covering Kelsey. And then when you move Kelsey in, now Slayer Maddox, whoever it is, they're going to pick up the slot receiver. And now Marcus Epps is supposed to know that Kelsey's his guy and he did not process it quick enough easy touchdown right the little attention little details there all right so that being said um they could have done better on defense we get that however I still love this core and it brings me into my next point before we segue over uh like subscribe whether it's Facebook YouTube whatever you know share the word because we over here are talking real stuff I don't talk no BS I give it to you straight and um I, I, I'm not a hundred percent right, but I'm, I'm on the ball more often than not. Um, so let's talk about the defense and Jonathan Gannon. Okay. Bringing that four man rush. You don't want to bring five plus against Mahomes because that's where he thrives. You want to blitz him. You want to heat him up. Boom. He's going to make you pay me. He's going to put you on the grill, cook your ass. Um, so I understand the hesitation there. However, you have to have some creativity. You have to mix it up. You have to bring things pre-snap that he hasn't seen before, right? There's a reason why he had some issues against a Bengals defense who, in my opinion, is not as talented as the Eagles defense, but they're more creative. So you have Jonathan Gannon, who's a young D coordinator in his second year here as D coordinator for the Eagles. Had some good, but had some bad there, okay? You have to be willing to take, take chances and get a feel for that in the game. So that being said, he's not going to be back next year. You know why? Because they're finalizing a deal for him to go out to Arizona, to the desert. The irony, right? The fact that you just played the Super Bowl in the desert, England, Arizona. And after losing a close game, not only are you getting a head coaching job, but you're going to be starting your journey as a head coach in the spot where you just played in the Super Bowl. All right, so he's taking over that team with Kyler Murray coming back off of injury and a lot of questions 
in that whole organization about which way they're going up, down, left, right, sideways. You know, he's getting his start there, which brings into question who's going to be the D coordinator for the Eagles. And one name that's been floating around is Fangio. Uh, Vic, Vic Fangio, I believe that's his name. The Eagles bought him in as a consultant for the past, I think, two games or so. He's a well-known, well-respected de defensive mind. Uh, I believe two or three years ago, he was the D coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys. And he was able to cover up a lot of deficiencies on that squad. He also was a defensive coach for the Bears. I don't know if he was head coach, but definitely D coordinator for sure for the Bears as well. He is very good at mixing up things pre-snap, showing you one thing, doing another. And as good as Jonathan Gannon was this year, that's something that he has yet to really get a full grasp on as he grows as a coach. Because remember, nobody's perfect. They're all young guys. Sirianni, Steichen, Gannon, they're growing. So if you br bring a guy in like Fangio as D coordinator, now we're talking about something. You're not losing too many pieces. They're going to re-sign C.J. Gardner-Johnson. You're you're going to have N'Kobe Dean, who's going to step in for T.J. Edwards, who will probably work on free agency. You have Josh Sweat. You have Hassan Reddick. You have Jordan Davis. You're going to lose Fletcher Cox and Javon Hargraves. But you're still going to have, like I said, Jordan Davis in the middle. And then you'll still have B.G. I think he might still be here on a, a one- or two-year deal. You have, And then you have, you're going to have Slay. And then you can figure out what you're going to do at the other cornerback spot. Maybe you bring back Bradbury. Maybe you get a guy in the draft. Either way, you have the majority of your pieces coming back. And if you bring a guy like Fangio in and have him, you know, coach them boys up, they're going to be in a very, very good spot. So that's what I would do moving forward. Let me know what you guys think, Eagles fans. Um, even if you're not Eagles fans, let me know what you think as well. And then looking at the offensive side of the ball, you lose your O coordinator in Shane Steichen, all right? Now, he took a job with the Colts. We just have a propensity for sending coaches to the Colts, whether it be Frank Reich or Shane Steichen, the list goes on, right? So he's getting his start out there in Indianapolis. So now we're going to have to fill in that OC spot, and the front runner is the current quarterback's coach for the Eagles. So he might end up getting that job. But, you know, you're part of the system. You know what's what. You're in those meeting rooms. You guys know the scheme. It's not really going to be that much of a transition, in my opinion. And and honestly, it's going to be more of a an opportunity for him to just build upon what he's already done these past one or two years under Steichen and Sirianni. So, you know, a lot moving forward, but I don't think too many things will change. I think as we move forward, we'll be looking at Jason Kelsey and seeing if he's going to come back, which I think he will. You, you have a game where you were so close to tasting your second Super Bowl uh, title, and then you're probably going to run back, you're going to run it back with 85% of that squad intact. I mean, I, I, I'd be wanting to run that back if I was him. You know, one or two more years, like, we're right there, let's run it back. Because ain't too much going to change on offense. You got your whole old line there. You got A.J. Brown, another year into the system. You got Devonta Smith. You got Jalen Hurts, who you're going to pay. Nothing's really going to change there. Run it back. Get it right. All right. So, you know, that's that's what's going on with the Eagles. Nobody likes losing, right? But I don't – I'm not angry because I can live with losing a chess match, okay? People were mad about the holding call on Bradbury. Should they have called it? No. However, that's not the reason they lost the game, all right? They had a lot of different opportunities in that game to be able to take control of it, and they didn't. They didn't collapse, but the Chiefs were able to slowly chip away and get their way, way back into the game, and you have to tip your hat to them, all right? So I'm not mad about the loss. It just makes me excited about what this team can do next year coming right back. And if we run into them again, all the better. Um, I love our chances of, of winning, all right? It could have been 38-35 us. It could have been 38-35 them like it was. It was really, really a coin flip. It was a chess match. The, the best team won. But both teams were supposed to be there. That's the biggest thing there. All right? It wasn't like the Chiefs got lucky to be there and they were playing a team in the Eagles and they got luck. You know, they played over their heads. No. And the Eagles, they didn't get there because they had the easiest schedule in football. Guess what? 
They played teams that were not um, – the, the teams they played, the strength of schedule was ranked like 30th or 31st in the NFL. However, they beat the crap out of most of those teams. And when it came down to playing the big dogs, 49ers, still, chir- still chirping, still talking. Y'all didn't make a Super Bowl. Sit down, shut your mouths, <laughs> and take your L. Take your beating like a man. All right? Your quarterback, you didn't have your starting quarterback in there, okay? But guess what? He didn't trip and fall over his toenail or banana peel. He got his ass knocked out of the game, and then your backup got knocked out of the game, all right? We came in there even before that injury happened, and uh, last time I checked, we ran the ball down your throats before Purdy even got onto the field. So you know exactly what time it was going to be, all right? So we were supposed to be in the spot we were at in the Super Bowl, and the Chiefs were supposed to be in the spot they were at. And the better team won. They got it done. Hats off to them. Let's come back next year. Uh, use the 10th pick from the Saints. Go ahead and get a top-notch player. If we don't get a top-notch player, trade back and get some more picks. And then run this thing back. All right? So that's why I see it with the Eagles. Let me know what your comments are. Um, and then secondly, I want to go into my Raiders because there was big news uh, just recently. Derek Carr has officially been released. And he's free to, hit, free to go ahead and... and test free agency and he he had a 40 million dollar cap hit that was going to go into effect so it's not a surprise that they cut him they given them permission to go ahead and you know um seek a trade with another team but when it didn't happen um he's hitting the free free agent market so i don't think he's going to be back to i'm about to say oakland to las vegas because you think about it every year or every two years you got a new head coach you never have any sort of continuity in that organization. I don't care what quarterback you are. You have a new head coach every two to three years. Come on now. You have, in your nine years with the Raiders, you have yet to have a top 10 defense in not one single year out of those nine years. All right? I'm not saying he's this guy, but let's let's go ahead and look at a guy, uh, last name, uh, Marino, first name, Dan. Did not have great defenses during his time with the Dolphins. And it cost him over the course of his career. Went to the Super Bowl his first year, I believe, in 1985. Never went back again. All right? I don't know what his O-line was like. Um, Receivers were okay. Um, They were were good receivers, but they were never like Jerry Rice and, and Terrell Owens. They were never that caliber receiver. And you never had a defense that was worth a damn. Hell, we even saw with Peyton Manning. That's his second... Um, example, Peyton Manning never had a top flight defense for the majority of his time with the Colts. And that cost him until later in his career. All right. So like Derek Carr, you look at a dysfunctional organization and the one constant was Derek Carr. That's the one constant in that organization. So yeah, you know, to, to your point, uh, Darnell, Unhappy with being sacked a lot. We went from 2016 where we had one of the top offensive lines in the game next to the Cowboys and the Eagles. We had uh, Donald Penn. We had uh, the center, Rodney Hudson. We had Rock Hudson. And we had a couple, um, we had one or two other uh, dogs from that line. That was the year, barring him getting the broken leg, we were serious candidates to go to the Super Bowl in that year. All right? But since then, not only has the line got worse, but you've had turnover in the front office and at the head coaching position. You know, Mike Mayock, gone. (laughs) Um, Whoever was there before um, our current head coach, gone. Uh, Offensive line, gone. So you went out and got a wide receiver in Devontae Devontae Adams, and he, he went out and did his thing. But guess what? The defense. The defense. It's another spot, man. Um, that secondary. I said it before the season. Hobbs, solid young player. But I'm like, if that's your answer to how you're going to upgrade the secondary, it's not going to be enough. And guess what? It was not enough. You had Matt, Mad Max, all right? You had Chandler Jones at defensive end, the other defensive end spot, but you had no secondary. All right, Jonathan Abram, Abram was the only capable player in your secondary, and he had bad shoulders. Right? To, to not address that or the offensive line 
why would Derek Carr be happy staying there? And even through all that, even through all the criticism, he was going out there and balling out. So, look, man, yo, hats off to Derek Carr. You already know what time it is, man. Um, No hate over there, man. I, and I, I hope you find a really good team to go to. Um, a couple of spots, you know, the Jets, that's one spot, one one possible destination. Two, the Saints, that's another po possible po uh, destination. Maybe they didn't want to trade for Derek Carr because they knew he'd be hitting the market as soon as the uh, guaranteed money deadline came up. They knew he'd be getting cut. So the Saints, that's a, that's a team I'd keep an eye on if I were um, Saints fans. Um, I think Derek Carr would be would do really well down down in New Orleans with that defense. Um, and then the Dark Horse team, um, I would say, would be the Dolphins. Because Tua, not just with the concussion concerns, but he people always question his arm. Can he get the ball downfield to Jalen Waddle and, and the Cheetah? That's that's the question. We know Derek Carr can. He, yeah, Derek Carr has one of the strongest arms in the league. So that would be a dark horse destination in my eyes. Uh, so Raiders fans, Raider Nation, let me know what you think about that. Um, but I never had a problem with Derek Carr. I thought he got the short end of the stick and... I, I wish him the best of luck. I don't see him going back to the Raiders. Um, I don't know how I would feel about uh, rejoining Aaron Rodgers with Devontae Adams. You know, it's been a rumor that's been floating around. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I, I have no clue what we're going to do at, at quarterback, but there's uh, the one kid out of Florida um, – one of the people was telling me about earlier, so I would check him out, see what he looks like. And, um, yeah, we're going to have to address that, but definitely address the offensive line. Nothing's going to move until that happens. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that. That's my recap for the Super Bowl, um, what's going on in the offseason with the coaching situations for the Eagles, and then what's going on with Derek Carr and where he's going to be headed in the offseason. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um and to all the Eagles fans, or even non-Eagles fans that are upset about the home call on Bradbury, look, you can call a penalty on every play. At the end of the day, you had opportunities to win the game. Did that help your chances? No, but that's not why they lost. Let's come back, fix up the, the, the things we need to so that we don't even give up 35 points or 38 points and then go run this back and get this dub, all right? Um, love y'all. Stay safe. You know what I mean, enjoy your weekend as we go into this weekend and uh, catch you on the next one. Peace.